<coughs> okay. So we'll wait right till three. All right. I'm going to get started here in just a minute. Right at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern. This is better than zooming from Idaho and Chicago. All right, welcome. It is noon Pacific. Uh, we are um, uh, September 10th, 2020. We're live streaming. Uh, this is Dennis Blitz, good friend and business partner. My name is uh, Aaron Adams. You've probably joining us today because you clicked on a link about real estate education. Uh, for the next 60 minutes, we're going to be focusing on active and passive investing. Uh, maybe you read the book Rich Dad Poor Dad. Maybe you um, have watched the flipping shows. Maybe you uh, have been affected by COVID and are looking to get into real estate. I had a um, I had an investor message me this week and said, is now a good time to get in? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I gave them the example that we've mentioned previously, you know, prior to, two, I've been doing real estate for 20 years. Prior to 2008, I had never made a million dollars in a year before. That That's something I'd never done that. And after the last crash, uh, I've never gone a year without making a million dollars. And the catalyst was the opportunity that was created with the last crash. So what we're going to talk about today is the landscape of real estate. We're going to talk about some specific education that we have for you. You should already have, break that down for you. Uh, Dennis and his company work with, with uh, passive investors all over the country. Uh, we work with um, uh, active and passive investors. And we're actually in uh, my offices here in Indianapolis. Uh, we do a live uh, passive training for real estate investors. So we have about 30 investors that are going to be here uh, this weekend, and we're going to be focusing on passive investing. And so they're all investors that have jobs, that have careers, that have retirement money that they're looking to invest into real estate. So we're going to talk about that. So hopefully over the next hour, you can get a feel for what's happening in real estate nationally, what some opportunities are uh, for active investing, uh, how you can move forward on your passive journey. And, and we feel like we have a good uh, fit and a good game plan for anyone. Dennis and I are partners in the Get Real Estate Education Venture. The reason we chose that URL, the reason that we've spent money on ads on Facebook is because we're very proud of what we do. And we both have been in different aspects of investing in the real estate world uh, for years. Dennis authored uh, 12 books. 14. 14 books. 14, but, but two of them didn't sell well, so we're going to save 12. 12. <laughs> Um, I actually owned a publishing company that, that they sold in the 90s for, for uh, quite a bit of money. And uh, uh, as an outgrowth of that, he um, uh, is a trustee for investors who would like to uh, do alternative investments, who would like to invest their retirement money. So we're going to explain to you today how you can uh, take money in your IRA, in your 401k, uh, use it to own property, use it to do loans, use it to invest in businesses. We're going to break that down for you as well. So. To the first off, the first thing I want to start off with is the gifts that we've already given you. And so in the email that we sent you, there was two links. Let me show you what those trainings are because we've already given you over six hours of real estate training. And so we don't want to spend a ton of time going over what we've already given you because we want you to have a chance to watch that. So if you go to AaronAdamsTraining.com uh, and you click on real estate classes, uh, I'm going to show you the first training that you have. If you scroll down, so the first training that you have is IRA 101 training. And Dennis, what what, what that class is three hours. What did we cover? My golly, I I, I have a list with me. But we really talk about you know. And let's talk about IRA uh, investing with an IRA first as a at, at the ground level. One of the reasons we talk about IRA investing or using your IRA to invest in alternative assets such as real estate is because the income is tax-free or you know tax deferred or if you have a Roth IRA tax-free and it's tax-free for life when we sit down and break out the importance of taxation it is a tremendous difference between earning money and paying taxes on the earnings or earning money tax-free and again you know we're not talking about tax deferred we're talking about tax-free in a Roth IRA for life so that's why we focus on and talk about 
those kinds of investments, the investments that are in IRA, that you can make with your IRA and that you can make with your 401k, real estate being one of them. Many people just don't think about this. I, I talk with, with uh, professional investors uh, every day. And over and over again, I'll hear somebody who's been investing for 10, 15, 20, 30, 35 years saying, I didn't know I could buy income producing real estate with the money that's in my IRA or the money that's in that old 401k that I have. So that's what we're going to talk about. And then what we're going to talk about is, what was your question? Oh, what's on the tape? Yeah. What's on the tape? My golly. What we did was Aaron uh, sat down and just started asking questions about IRAs. And we covered everything from how to start one to how an IRA invests in real estate. People have never done it before. It's, it's, it can be a complex process. We walk you with you through the process and make it very, very simple. We talk about how your IRA can partner. You know, uh, uh, people say, well, gee, I want to buy this house. Uh, the house is, um, I'll make up a number, $120,000. My IRA only has $80,000. My IRA couldn't buy that house. We'll show you, yes, your IRA can buy the house by partnering. Maybe partnering with another IRA, your spouse's IRA, or a friend's IRA, or even partnering with yourself. When we talk about how to do that on the tape, we also talk about everything all the way down to naming a beneficiary because when you name your beneficiary, it's going to have an impact on how that person is taxed or not taxed. So all those informations about IRAs will be there and, and it's free, uh, a wonderful, wonderfully profitable and powerful tool using your IRA money or 401k money old 401k money for investing. Yeah, so <clears throat> that yeah, we've already sent you uh, a link uh, for this training and you can watch it absolutely free. You can see on the website that the, the cost of the training is $100 um, uh, as a standalone training. But you know, we meet investors who, uh, you know, less than, less than four or 5% of, of all investors even control their own retirement money, correct? Absolutely, it's 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 way less than four or five percent. It's actually about two and a half percent of IRA owners ever venture out of the stock bond mutual fund wheelhouse, and and the stock bond mutual fund wheelhouse it, it restricts what you can invest in to what the brokerage house offers. And the thing is, if the brokerage house offers it, they want to make a profit on your retirement plan. So you call a large brokerage firm and he, he pick the name and say, well, I want to buy the house at uh, 123 Green Street. I, I've looked at this house and, you know, the rental return is good. The neighborhood is appreciating. Uh, there's all these positives about that type of investment. And one of the things I like about the investment besides the earning power is the stability of real estate versus the ups and downs of the stock market. And that brokerage firm, and I don't care which one it is, is going to say, can't do that in an IRA. What they should be telling you is the truth. You can't do it in their IRA because if you want to buy a house with your IRA money, 401k money, they don't make a profit when you buy it, they don't make a profit as you hold it, and they don't make a profit when you sell it. And so they say, we won't hold it. So self-directed IRAs will hold any investment where you can, where you make the profit. Yeah, so um, uh, the link to Dennis's company is IRA Club dot org and uh you can see that that there's a ton of information and education uh, he shows you how your 401k can own rental property flip houses uh invest in mobile homes uh, agricultural land undeveloped land own airbnbs uh, there's q a's there's articles on there and what what we find is that most investors had no idea that they could own these types of uh, investments in their retirement account. And so part of the reason for our educational mission is we feel like many Americans, yourself included, have too high of a percentage of their retirement money. They're not diversified. So that everything's in the market, everything's in index funds. And, and when the market crashed in 2008, investors lost $3 trillion from their retirement accounts when the market crashed. But the wealthiest Americans have a different kind of strategy for diversification. You can see from this pie chart, that the wealthiest Americans have about a third of their net worth in real estate, a quarter of their money in private equity, only about 20% in stocks, 4% in hedge funds, 9% in fixed income. But they, they, there's a very limited exposure to the market. And I meet investors every month 
who have 60, 70, 80, 100% of their retirement oh, money yes. and their net worth invested in the market. And but if I ask them, are you, do you consider yourself a stock market expert? They go, oh, no, I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> then why is your money there? And so the event that we're holding here this weekend is for investors who, the majority of them are looking to diversify some of their IRA and 401k into some rental property. And so we'll literally, we'll sell property to those investors at the event here this weekend and manage them for them. Uh, I own Alpine Property Management. Uh, we're, we're, we're situated in um, four markets across the U.S. And so my partners from Charlotte are here this weekend. They have... Uh, uh, rehabbed and rented real estate to sell investors. I have my team from Idaho here this weekend. My team from Kansas City is here. And here in Indianapolis, we manage over 1,600 properties. So um, uh, I have a, a massive uh, operation where we will this month sell property to investors and then we'll manage those properties for them as passive investments on the back end. And Dennis and, and his company will help many of my clients here this weekend take some of their 401k take some of their IRA and, and use it to invest in real estate. They can roll that money over for $175 and we're gonna show you how. And if you're listening to this and you're skeptical, we spent three hours walking you through step-by-step step, all the ways to do it, why it's legal, how to, how to structure it, and, 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 and it's, not an, it's not a withdrawal, it's not a transfer, it's a legal transaction. So that's one of the reasons uh, that we that we gave you that video because so few Americans, like Dennis said, two and a half percent of Americans uh, are utilizing this, and and it's a technique that the wealthy have been using for a long time. And the wealthy understand that you need a really good diversification strategy, and the wealthy understand that real estate is a great place to diversify your net worth. And anyone who's ever made a hundred million dollars has a huge percentage of that, if not the majority of their net worth, is held in real estate. And like Dennis mentioned, why not own a rental property in your IRA? You don't pay taxes on the rent. You don't pay taxes if you sell it. There's no capital gain. You don't even file a tax return by owning property in your IRA. Your IRA literally goes on the title of that property. And so we gave you that free training from Aaron Adams training, the IRA 101 training. So that's one that you're gonna wanna watch if that's sounding interesting. Now, maybe you don't have any money in your IRA. Maybe you uh, need to make more money. Maybe you, uh, because of COVID, you've been left uh, laid off from your job. Uh, maybe you're trying to figure out a new game plan because you're, 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 you're not making enough money. So we put together a real estate 101 training. And this is the other free gift that's in the email that we sent you, a link to this class. Again, it's a $100 class that we sell. It's three hours. And uh, I recorded it with my partner, Travis Howard from Charlotte. He's my partner in our Charlotte operation. And the goal of this video is your first introduction to real estate, meaning uh, maybe you're interested because you watch the flipping shows, because you uh, read the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, because you've always wanted to get into real estate. Maybe you have a friend who makes money in real estate. This video is a three hour starting point. So what we do in the three videos, we, we educate you to what we think some of the hot strategies are. We go through wholesaling and flipping and, and direct mail marketing and Airbnb and mobile homes in commercial real estate and foreclosure. And, and we go through those topics uh, in a way that we kind of lay out all the pros and cons so that you as a beginning investor can say, all right, based on where I live, based on how much money I have, based on how much time I have, based on how much I want to put into real estate, this could be a good path for me. And so we, we gave you this training as well so that you can kind of get started whether you're active or passive. So we're really excited about the two gifts that we've given you in addition to this, this live stream today. Um, because Dennis and I both have been uh, educators for a long time. Dennis wrote 14 books. I have one. I taught high school. We both have been traveling around the country for the past few years teaching investors. You know, Dennis's biggest challenge with his company at IRA Club is that investors just don't know that they can do this strategy. That's right. That's right. Uh, you know, <clears throat> you were talking about, you know, the, the, the uh, Real Estate 101 tape. And I do want to say to people that if you are thinking of being an investor, Terrific. That's wonderful for you, and, and that's fine. Whether you use your IRA or not, that's 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 up to you. However, if you're thinking... What? Fred Baldwin said whatever link is the one that he and Russ are on. So he probably is like, we're there. It's not. There's four viewers right now. On ours? So let me call Fred and find out why. Uh-oh. What, uh, what, what link 
If you can watch us, we're having technical difficulties. Uh, give us a minute here. We have four viewers on the link? Yeah. method it's, actor it's i going. can't it's going I, I, oh it's going oh. yeah <laughs> it's going all right so uh we, yesterday we were we had some technical difficulties we were unable to do our live stream yesterday can you shut that door hill and uh so we're actually recording today's link on yesterday's link so if you're watching this live congratulations you made it uh if you missed it then we're going to finish recording this here in 45 minutes and we'll send you the link. So if you're watching this an hour delayed, apologize. Uh, we had some uh, live stream technical issues we're still working through. Thank you. What we were talking about before of that little brief interruption was I just want to talk to people who are thinking of being active. And whether you know, you're going to use your IRA or not use your IRA, that's up to you. It's up to your personal situation. But if you're thinking of being an active real estate investor, I couldn't encourage you more than to take advantage of the offer that Aaron has on his education because I'm going to tell you if you're going to do real estate investing you will get an education you can find out what it is by listening to people or hearing from people who have done it a hundred times 500 times a thousand times or you can get it with your own experience I gotta tell you experience is a real real expensive teacher You'll learn everything if you don't go broke along the way. <laughs> what you do want to do is avail, avail yourself uh, of, of what Aaron is offering as far as investment, real estate investment uh, uh, learning process and hear from people who've done, like I say, they've done it a hundred times, 500 times, a thousand times. They have been down paths that probably you never even knew there was a path, you know. You know, you haven't done anything yet, yet on evicting, have you? Evictions? Uh, we haven't, but we should, right? We sure should, yeah. because, because I, 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 I've been involved with this, right? And so it, the first time you have to do an eviction, I go, oh my God, how do I do an eviction? I don't know. And then, and then let me ask a question: Have you ever had an eviction where the person wouldn't leave? Yeah, absolutely. Of course. So you had, so it's evictions, and then you had that one. How about this one? Have you ever had an eviction where a person left? But a squatter moved in. Absolutely. And it's, but all these are learning experiences. Yep. The first time you do them, my God, they're overwhelming yeah. and expensive and costly lessons and painful lessons. Listen to a person who's done it over and over again. And, and I'm talking about the negative things, but there's positive things too. So what's um, Dennis brings up a, a critical point about both of our operations. Uh, we're not a seminar company. We're not structured as an education company. Less than 1% uh, of my income comes from uh, uh, selling any classes. I make my money from the deals that I own, which are a couple hundred properties, uh, from the management companies, the construction companies, the deals that we sell. And so we're doing over $75 million a year in real estate revenue. And there's been a lot of seminar companies out there. They're selling classes. They sell classes for $5,000, $10,000, $25,000. They're not real estate companies, they're seminar companies, and that's not how we're structured. And, and, and uh, Dennis, uh, he's a trustee, so he has hundreds of millions of dollars of investors' IRA money flowing through his accounts, uh, being used to, to buy deals, to make loans, to invest in alternative investments, and he's the trustee. He and his team oversee those transactions. And so the, the training that we're giving you comes from years of experience, Dennis authored books about securities law um, 
and, and, and is very knowledgeable on that subject and, and speaks all over the country on those types of things. And, and, and I'm a real estate guy and, and I've done you know thousands of properties since I started 20 years ago. When I started, I was teaching high school and I went to a seminar on the weekend and read a couple of books and started doing deals. And so the path that, that we're teaching, the goal that we have for you is wherever you're at, if you uh, love your career and you'd like to have a few rental properties passive, maybe some in your retirement and some you can't, we'd love to invite you here to Indianapolis to join us for one of our weekend trainings. We do about nine of these a year. There's no cost for the training. We pay for your hotel. We pay for uh, the meals. And so if you're a passive investor, we have properties for you. If you're an active investor, then we have education for you. So maybe you're broke and you clicked on the link because you wanted to uh, change your life, change your financial future. Maybe you hate your job. You want to fire your boss. You want to get into real estate. Uh, watch the Real Estate 101 class because it's a good, uh, tangible starting point for you. And, and join us on these live streams. So every Wednesday, Dennis and I do this active and passive combined live stream. And then on Thursdays, we missed the one yesterday, and then on Thursdays we do, uh, I alternate between active one week, passive the next. And so because we got jammed up yesterday, uh, we're kind of combined them both together today, and, and we're, we're spending some time explaining. But uh, those of you that are interested in, in buying property from us and joining us at one of these events, our website is alpinecapitalsolutions.com, and you can see we have a live training event tab feel free to uh, go to that live training uh, event tab and um, you can see the dates. We have uh, this month's event here in Indianapolis, the 11th through the 13th. We have them in October and November. If you're interested in passive investing, uh, we also live stream this event. So uh, email Fred, Fred at Alpine CS, uh, or click on the link on the website, uh, the info link up at the top. Uh, info at Alpine CS, and we're happy to uh, send you some information about that. And you're, you're free to join us absolutely free on the live stream as well. And so hopefully you understand uh, right off the bat that, that we've given you two trainings plus the training today, absolutely free. There's been no cost, no obligation, because we believe that when you see this, the scale of our operation, I have hundreds of employees, Dennis has a massive operation um, in terms of, of, of dollars that he's managing. Um, that that uh, it will resonate with you and you'll want to do business with us. That's that's the no bones about it kind of idea. You know, Aaron, I, I, every now and then I get a phone call from somebody who uh, will have heard Aaron speaking or I speak or somebody, and he'll, they'll call us up <clears throat> and they'll say, and they'll call me, right? Because they're asking questions about Aaron, so they want to call him. They'll call me and they'll say, do you think it's worth it to go to the weekend? <laughs> I, I think it's worth it. And so here's the answer that I give to them. The answer is, look, at, if you're interested in real estate, and I said to you, you could have a lunch for an hour, that's it, just one hour, with a person who has bought, fixed up, sold 3,000 properties, or sold, has done that 2,000 times, has done that 1,000 times. You think it would be worth it to have that lunch. You think if you had to fly from wherever you live across the country to have that lunch, you would do so. And of course you would. Well, what this weekend is, it's a weekend where you get three days to sit with people who this is what they do. They're not here to uh, get tuition dollars from you and then leave and then tomorrow do a class on how to sell aluminum siding. These are people who tomorrow will go back into the field and buy houses, rehab houses, either rent them out or sell them. And you get to spend a weekend with them asking any questions that you like. It is the most valuable weekend you could possibly, possibly spend. And Indianapolis is not nearly as bad as you think it is. It's really a nice town. <laughs> We've been hosting that event here in Indianapolis <coughs> since 2009. We call it our cash flow field training. It's for passive investors. It's focused on passive investment. And, and, and we basically spend three days educating you. We have, uh, Dennis comes down from Chicago uh, every month. He and his team walk investors through step-by-step -step how to take your IRA, your 401k money, and use it to invest in real estate. We have um, asset protection experts who tell you how to protect your properties, protect your wealth, uh, protect yourself from lawsuits. We have tax experts that come in and walk you through how to maximize your write-offs uh, as a passive investor. 
Uh, we have insurance people who tell you what kind of insurance you should have on the properties. We literally get on a bus on Saturdays and, and go see deals that, that we have here in town. So this weekend, we're gonna go to an Airbnb that I own. We're gonna go to an apartment complex that I own. We're gonna go to some single family home rentals. And so it's an event we've been doing for a very long time. We limit the size of that monthly event to 50 investors. There's no cost for it. Um, you can email Fred at alpinecs.com and he can put you in touch with our team. Uh, and like I mentioned, we pay for your hotel, meals are included, um, but you have to qualify. You have to actually have money to invest. Yeah. So we usually say that that number is 100,000. So you're, you need to have 100,000 in a retirement account, 100,000 in savings to where potentially you could invest. Or a combination. Or a combination. If you don't have that, then we usually encourage you to, to, to just join us on the live stream so you can benefit from the education with, you know, with, uh, uh, and, and soak that up. And then we're, that one of the reasons that we built the uh, Aaron Adams training page was because Aaron, it's really focused on active investing. How do I make more money? So I have $100,000 that I can invest passively. Now in my case, when I started 20 years ago, I, I was flipping. And so I was flipping homes, I was flipping apartment complexes, and I was able to build my net worth by flipping deals. And so uh, you can see on the Aaron Adams training page, we have a class on flipping. And you'll see kind of most of these classes are structured around um, uh, different active income strategies. Uh, we have a mobile home class, $400. We have an Airbnb training. All of these trainings are about three hours uh, long. We have an asset protection uh, training. That could be for active or passive investors. Uh, commercial construction, you can see the list of classes here. We just uh, actually this morning recorded the foreclosure class. Dennis got here at the tail end of that. So we walk you through the foreclosure auction. We walk you through the three stages of foreclosure, pre-foreclosure, auction, REO. We uh, talk to you about the pros and cons of each stage. We go through all the terminology associated with foreclosure. We talk about the differences in states so that after three hours of that, you'll know, or, or on any of these topics, you'll know for only $99, is this a strategy that makes sense for me? All of these strategies are relevant. Some are more relevant based on where you live and the opportunities that are out there. So for example, mobile home investing is not a good strategy in Hawaii because there's no mobile no home parks. Uh, it's not great in Alaska. There's, there's, there's very few of those either. But it's fantastic in Florida. It's great in California. It's good in most other states. Uh, Airbnb is not very good in Wyoming. In rural Wyoming, right? Uh, but commercial could be good. And so um, th these are all trainings uh, based on experience that I've had over the last 20 years, uh, uh, experience that I've personally been involved with, and that um, you as an investor can can kind of sample it, see if you're interested in it, and then and then uh, decide if you'd like more information. So so the other thing you can see is if, for example, you watch the mobile home training and you're like, man, I really want to flip mobile homes. Well, then for um, uh, under our bundle three here for fifteen hundred dollars, we're going to uh, in addition to the training, we'll give you the PowerPoint presentation. We give you all the documents and contracts that we use. I own nine mobile home parks. Um, I have three dealerships. It's a big operation. Uh, you get all the documents and contracts that we use in running our parks. Uh, we do uh, every other week we do a Zoom call. And so you can get on that and ask questions. Um, and so it's, there's a lot of value in the education. It's, it's everything that I believe that you need to get, get started and move forward on mobile homes. But it also, it, you know, it all starts with just a $99 class that you can buy. So um, let's let's kind of step back for a minute Dennis, and talk about the real estate the real estate environment that we're in and, and the real estate the real estate landscape. Because uh, if you you know you may you may be thinking active or passive or both, but if the, the real question that I get is is now a good time for real estate? And I have a slide here that talks about the two phases of uh, post COVID that we're dealing with across mm -hmm. the country. We have some areas like uh, in Idaho where I'm based that are uh, in the reopen phase. And you know, my kids are in school uh, Monday through Thursday. Um, they, they still have Fridays off for distance learning. But there's, there's many, many school kids across the country that, that are still in the, mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, we're, we're more in the normalized phase. But we have many kids, many that are just barely in the reopen. So they're still being homeschooled or they're only on a, a couple days a week or their parents have put them in alternative schools. And, and across the country, 
we're seeing this. And this has a direct impact on real estate. So for example, um, place in New York City, I noticed just this week, announced that they're going back to 25% restaurant yeah, occupancy. I saw that. And I saw a lot of restaurant owners are like, that doesn't help. Doesn't help. Doesn't help. You can't, a restaurant can't make money out of 25% occupancy. No. And, and it's like slow clap if you're a restaurant owner. Um, th th there's a very real chance that 20, 30, 40% of the restaurants and food outlets in Manhattan will be gone, be gone. a year from now. Yeah. Well, I live in Chicago, not on Chicago. And I tell you, there's a lot of used restaurant equipment available for sale right now. Yeah. Now, Indianapolis is interesting because I had some people say, how are you going to do an event in Indianapolis this weekend? You know, Indianapolis is third in the country with, re with normalized uh, hotel occupancy. They're at 53% of the hotels are occupied. Yeah. Uh, in Chicago right now, it's very much still reopened. They're at no. less than ten percent. Yeah, very, yeah, yeah. I, no, I came in last night, and and the restaurants are open, and people are downtown. Yeah, and so um, the the biggest impact that COVID is having is on you know conventions, travel, tourism, hotels, and in the real estate world, that means commercial. Mm -hmm. And so, if you were an investor that was kind of thinking of focusing on commercial real estate investing, it's not going to be a good time. Uh, but six months from now, I could see the bottom fall out of a lot of commercial real estate. It may be a phenomenal time to buy mm -hmm. because if fundamentally you believe in the U.S. economy, fundamentally you believe the fact that things are going to come back when they get a when they get a vaccine or when they get a treatment, then um, then you know, do you believe that New York's going to continue to be empty or that it's come back? I think it's going to come back. Nobody knows what's going to happen, but there could be a good bet. So if you're if you're a business owner that has been thinking about buying a business. Or buying the building that they're in now might be a great time. Oh yeah, yeah. And 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 the question of will you know things will be different forever is is a rational question and and a question that we all ponder. And yet we look back at history. I clearly remember after nine eleven saying you know reading that no one is ever going to get on a plane again. That that's that's the whole airline industry is over. Yeah. And then a year later you couldn't get a flight. And so so over and over again things do tend to drift back to what was normal. Yeah, investors really do have a, a, sh a short, memory. short memory. Yeah, well, so I, I, the whole public does. I mean, we go back to what we're, we're comfortable with, and that's what we're comfortable with. So uh, certainly commercial. I mean, uh, <laughs> I have uh, 30 Airbnbs here in Indianapolis. They've been affected. We made no money in March, no money in April, no money in May, uh, a little bit of money in June, a little bit more money in July. We're finally making enough to cover our, you know, mm -hmm. Dennis, we, we have an Airbnb together. Uh, this month, we made enough to cover our taxes and our insurance and mm -hmm. utilities. Mm -hmm. So we made it a little bit better than Broke Even. Mm -hmm. We don't have a mortgage on that property. So, well, you know, and this, this year hasn't been a great year. However, it'd be, I, 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 and, and with all real estate, you know, real estate is such a dynamic investment. With, with all real estate, we get, we get you know, uh, and, and I get this all the time. The person who says, I bought this home uh, uh, inside my IRA. And really, when I get done with the, the taxes and the insurance and other costs and maintenance, I'm only making 8%. I think I should be making more. And, and, and they want to hang up. You know, and I say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Has the property appreciated? Has the neighborhood changed? So yes, Aaron and I are partners in, in an Airbnb uh, that has been cash neutral for four years. But it's in a neighborhood that is exploding yeah. as far as property value is concerned. I'm very comfortable just, you know, waiting for when we choose to sell it. Yeah. So uh, it really highlights um, this this vision of, you know, if, if the richest Americans are putting a third of their net worth in real estate, it should say something for our average Americans, because this doesn't count your, your house. Your primary residence is not an asset because you pay for it. Mm -hmm. So this this is... Um, I mean, it may count towards part of your net worth, but it's really not an asset. And and so we meet investors who, you know, no one ever says, you know, I used to be in real estate, but it sucks. I hate it now. You know, they say that about multi-level marketing. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they say that about uh, you know uh, uh, you know other strategies like day trading. I hear that. You know, some people. Oh yeah. I don't like investing in business. But but I never heard somebody say, yeah, I really did. I used to do great in real estate. I'll never do it again. People don't say that because once you learn uh, how to invest in real estate, passive or active, and once you have incorporated that into your net worth, you wondered how you ever 
it survived without it. I always, uh, I frequently say to people who day trade, uh, day trading is the uh, hardest way to make an easiest living. It really is. But but you just mentioned uh, the income, passive income. And I want to tell you, the other day, I you may have seen this, it was an article in the uh, uh, paper that uh, about Warren Buffett, <laughs> there's an article about Warren every day, but uh, and, uh, the other day it was it was called the $30,000 haircut, I think was the name of, of the article. And what Buffett was talking about in that, in that description was the power of uh, uh, compounded interest, the, comp the power of how much you can make on your money can make. That. And so what happens is, you know, I was thinking about it when I was reading it. And, you know, everybody knows a young couple. You know, they're, they're just married. They're just starting. Uh, they've got debt. They've, you know, they've got their apartment. They've got some cars, a car or two. Uh, they've got some college debt. And, and they're both working. And he said, why are you both working? And somebody's going to say, well, a one-income family can't make it. We have to have two incomes. And you say, well, yes, you, yeah, that's true. That's true. I understand. And the industry has to have two incomes to, to make ends meet today. However, what happens is take a look at, at Warren Buffett talking about, in his way, compound interest, about your money making money. Take a look at Einstein, and I was thinking about this when I read, read the article by, about Buffett, that you know Einstein supposedly said that compound interest is the greatest mathematical you know gift of all time, and people say, well, you know, why the hell is Einstein talking about you know compound interest? He's a physicist. Well, the fact is, people do forget Einstein was very wealthy. He was very successful, and the interesting thing about Einstein was. He never made more than a college professor's income. Yeah. He was an extremely knowledgeable and extremely good investor. And the point is, what Buffett has done, what Einstein did, is they had a two-income family. The second income was their money. They let their money make money. And it's the common thing I see every, every day when we talk to people. And I say, where is, you know, what do you have in your IRA? What do you have in your 401k? And the first most common answer is, I don't know. The second most common answer is, I'm not sure where it's at. I'm not sure what it's invested in. And I don't know what it's making. And I can tell you, those are formulas for disappointing future. Because if you're not making money, you know, you have a wonderful money-making tool with your IRA or your 401k. It's a terrific money-making tool because it pays no income tax. What, they, the, what wealthy people do is they make their money, make money, and that's what you can be doing with the IRA, with the 401k. Yeah, in fact, that same article said that if Warren Buffett would have... So he made a million bucks by the time he was like 20, but they said that if he would have quit when he was 65, he'd only be worth $6 million today. Right, yes, I saw that. Isn't and, that amazing? And living another 20 years and continue to make, because yeah. he's made 20% a year compounded annually. Yeah. That's yeah. basically, that's like the average number there. Like it's only 20%. There's other investors that have outperformed him, but he's made 20% for 60 years. And, and the, the more money you make with money, yeah. the more money, it, you know, which is, a, which is a great advertisement, which wasn't, it, it didn't say it in the article, but it's a great advertisement for rational investing. Yes. You know, it is, it is you know, uh, Buffett famously right now is the largest shareholder of, of Buffett's company, the largest shareholder of Apple, but he did not own Apple for years and years and years. Yeah. And if you say why, he says, it didn't pay a dividend. Buy things that pay you money. So let's take a look at uh, where rental markets were before coronavirus, because to really understand the opportunities that are out there for active or passive investing, uh, you need to know where we were at the beginning of the year and, and what the, how those opportunities are going to trickle through. And so um, I've taken some graphs from Harvard's Joint Center for Housing Studies. Uh, if you're interested in reading some of the primary data, um, if you just go to uh, Harvard, um, Joint Center for Housing Studies, and um, you don't have to register. There's no fee. Uh, if you click on research, uh, this is from America's Rental Housing Report uh, in 2020. So it's where we were kind of pre-COVID, and there's some really interesting statistics from that. Over the last six years, we've had 42% appreciation in housing. What does that mean? Well, six years ago, median home price was 163,000. It's now up to 231. So 
homes have been doing this. Um, but wages have only increased 20%. So six years ago, uh, average wage was 20 bucks an hour. It's only increased to 24. So while wages have been doing that, home prices have been doing this, we have a huge affordability gap. As a landlord, that's, uh, that's good for me. Less people buying homes means more renters, more quality renters. Um, not only are homes becoming less affordable, but our typical home buyer has a lot more debt than they ever have. And you can see student loan debt is at unprecedented levels. We haven't had an increase in student loan debt that correlates to inflation, an increase in students. We've, we've literally watched over the last 30 years a social change where it's become more and more acceptable just to take on a bunch of student loan debt. Um, and, and so it's really hurting Americans' ability to buy homes. Now, when I flip houses to uh, homeowners, um, that strategy uh, is, uh, is fine because we have a shortage of homes in this country. And you can see that housing construction has barely kept pace with household growth for eight years now. And, and you can see also that we're, we're underbuilt by about four million homes across America. And so um, it's interesting because they keep saying in COVID, like right now in Charlotte, one of the markets that we're in, uh, they only have one and a half months inventory of homes on the market. Usually you like to see six months worth mm -hmm. of supply. It's one and a half. There's been a lot of people that haven't listed their homes for sale because they don't want COVID buyers entering their house. That's, That's right. a factor. That's right. You have a lot of people who have financial insecurity. So they're like, what's going to happen with my job? What's going to happen with my career? You know, in January, they were thinking about upgrading because they got a raise. In, in, in September, they're worried about not getting laid off. And so they're definitely not buying. But, you know, for every restaurant manager that's not working, you have an Amazon warehouse manager that just got the biggest bonus check of his life. That's right. That's right. And so uh, that guy, that Amazon guy is looking to upgrade his homes. But it's been interesting. We've seen in every one of our markets an unprecedented level of demand for homes. Multiple yes. offers in all of our markets in Indianapolis and Kansas City. I put a home on the market for 180000 here in Indianapolis. I got four cash offers the same day because it was right in that sweet spot of pricing. So what's interesting is we should, because we're underbuilt, we should have um, ridiculous demand, but we still have really strong demand because they're, you know, every day, even though unemployment's 8%, we still have 92% employment. And 92% employment means there's still people buying homes. But, but there's still a lot of opportunity out of the 8% unemployment because it's, you know, basically the unemployment rate has tripled. So foreclosures are potentially going to go up. So strategies like, like flipping and wholesaling can be excellent uh, active income strategies for investors. You know, Airbnb, some people are saying, well, you know, I'm glad I'm not in Airbnb right now. We've watched here in Indianapolis, 20% of our competitors leave the market because they had mortgages. Mm -hmm. And I 100% believe that a year from now, we're going to be back to full convention schedule minus those 20% investors. Mm -hmm. And so as an Airbnb owner, I've loved that it's kind of thinned the herd. And a lot of my competitors have been leaving the space because for me personally, um, uh, I'm going to be able to charge more with less vacancy. We'll be able to charge more on our, our property that we own because some of our competitors are out. But let me give a, a response to this, not, not for our, our investment, but for your investment. And that is, uh, in my book, uh, <laughs> I talk about Airbnb, Airbnb, and I mention them, and I talk about just an old rule that says, hey, look, Airbnb give short-term income. That's great. Yeah. But you don't want to take on too much long-term debt so you can make a short-term income because sometimes there's an interruption in that short-term income. The coronavirus, you couldn't predict it. I couldn't predict it. No one could have. And yet, it interrupted the short-term income, the people who rely on short-term income, and if they walked into that transaction with too much debt, they were wiped out. Yeah, and, and we saw that in 2008. I saw builders go under who were over leveraged. They had too many loans uh, to build their, their housing developments. We saw house flippers who had a bunch of loans went bankrupt. We saw rental property owners who had too many mortgages and, and too high percentage of debt go under. And there's really something to be said for owning properties free and clear. The majority of the investors that will be here this weekend that are working with Dennis and his team, most of them will just take cash from their IRA and buy those properties without yeah. loans from us. I was about to say, this is exactly where the IRA and the 401k come in, 
so that instead of taking on all that debt, you say, wait a second, I, I'm going to upgrade where I have my IRA or 401k from the risk of an up and down market, as we see last week, it, we'll see over and over again, uh, into the stability of rental income. Yeah, I mean, it, right now, maybe you have $400,000 in, uh, in the stock market and IRA. That's unleveraged. You own that stock free and clear. Why not take 200000 of it and diversify into some, some rental real estate? The properties that we sell, uh, we've already bought them with, I've already bought them with my money. I've already fixed them up. I've already rented them out and, and they have a tenant in them. Imagine your IRA going on title and next month that rent check goes to the trust account at the IRA club and, and that's your growth. And if you look at, imagine if you would have been doing that, you know, maybe some of you remember 2008. If you look, you know, I have a chart here, it shows 2006 to 2017. Market crashed in 2008. So uh, stock market crashed, investors lost three trillion, uh, the average investor lost 40 to 50%. So imagine if you got 100,000 bucks in your IRA right now, and the stock market crashes because of the presidential election, because third and fourth quarter earnings suck. I mean, just this week, stock prices have been softening. Yes. I think we're over ambitious about tech. You got all these day traders that have been pumping the market up because they're sitting at home. Um, uh, and, and now it's worth 40 or 50K. You're just screwed, right? Um, also in 2008, real estate prices crashed. And so flippers in Florida, flippers in uh, home flippers in Las Vegas, home flippers in California all went under because they thought they were going to sell a house for 200. It was now worth 120. They were screwed. And so real estate crashed. Okay. But what didn't crash was rent income. There, in, 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 in 2006, median income, 909, about 900 up to 947. The average income, 944, 941, 997. Market crash continued to go up. Whether you look at it from rent averages or median rents, it's the same effect. Rents go up in a downturn. And so the investors, the wealthy Americans that owned rental properties in their IRA and in their 401k, yeah, maybe a house that they bought for 100k down here was only worth 70k up here, but their rent just kept going up. And so if you were making 8% on your money here, you're making eight and a half, nine, nine and a half, ten percent on that original hundred uh, k, and all you have to do is hold it long enough for the real estate prices to go back up again. Because invariably, they always have, and they tend to do that, just like the market. And so, whereas if you if you lose, if you got a hundred k in the market and it goes to forty, you're just screwed. That's right. And, and again, this is why. Uh, I, I'm not a huge fan, and, and don't follow me. This, I'm not giving you investment advice. I'm not a huge fan of heavy leverage. Some people say, "Boy, you're going with the heaviest leverage you can." I think they're all crazy because you know, w you know, if your asset came down from that hundred to seventy, the bank is going to say, "Wait a second, we loaned you based on a hundred value." They're going to call that loan. I would, I would, you know, agree with them. And so, so you want to always have enough cushion. That, that your IRA, or that your, probably your, uh, your real estate can ride out an increase or decrease in value because in the end, it comes back up. You know, also from the Joint Center for Housing Studies report, it <clears> showed <throat> that we're very, the number of affordable housing units has been steeply declining. We've lost um, a total of 4 million affordable rental units uh, going back to 2013. We also have vacancy rates that are too low. Is there such a thing as a vacancy rate too low, Dennis? There sure is, and we have it. You know, if you look at vacancy rates between four and ten percent going back to two thousand and six, you know, vacancy rates in two thousand nine, two thousand ten for for rentals were between you know seven and nine percent. The higher end of stuff, the th the thousand a month plus, um, it's continued to to. to uh, to go up because of all the new construction, but when you look at the low income and the and the blue collar rentals, their vacancy rates are down at uh, five percent. So we've seen that here in Indianapolis, where we have sixteen hundred rentals that we manage, and and uh, our vacancy rate is uh, under under five percent. Oh, I, I actually was surprised it's even you know I'm, because I was talking to Travis who runs the uh, uh, Charlotte, Charlotte office, and and I said to him, Travis, if I can find you. You know, 65 
ready to rent houses tomorrow, how long would it take you to rent them out? And he said, maybe a week. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, the segment that we focus on is the blue collar, uh, lower middle class segment. And I put this slide together to kind of illustrate what we saw in the last downturn. You have this bucket of uh, middle class and blue collar renters and homeowners. Uh, you got your, your rich folks up here and your really uh, poor folk down here. And, and when you have a downturn, you get two income families where one gets laid off. You have one income family where they find work but for less money. You have retirees that have to downgrade their <coughs> lifestyle because they don't have enough to retire. That group falls out of the middle class and upper middle class bucket and end up owning or renting homes in the blue collar segment. And what doesn't happen is people stop graduating out of this blue collar segment. That doesn't happen in a downturn. And so this blue collar, lower middle class um, segment of the rental and homeowners bucket swells. And we saw that get bigger and bigger in 2009, 2010. And so part of that's because of affordability. Part of that's because we've had the unemployment rate triple. And many people are saying we've lost a million small businesses. A lot of jobs aren't going to come back or it's going to take a long time for them to come back. And so. Uh, as a landlord, uh, a passive investor, I've never seen better renters. I've never seen better applications. I've never seen shorter vacancies. So it's a fantastic time to be a landlord. As an active investor, there's massive opportunities because flipping is great right now. You just need to find a deal for 40 or 50 cents, 60 cents on the dollar, and you'll get multiple offers when you throw it on the market. So we put together a, uh, we have a flipping uh, 101 class that we put together where we walk you through all the formulas that we use for flipping. And a lot of people say, all right, well, I, I can manage a flip, but how do I find a deal or how do I get the money for the deal? Well, we have a creative finance class that we teach you how to do the financing. We teach you about the different loans that are out there. We have a construction class where we teach you uh, how to manage the construction on these jobs. I get some people that say, well, I, I, you know, I'm not really interested in owning the properties. Is there a way to make quick money is there a way to buy deals with no money down? Probably our most popular whole class right now is our wholesaling, mm -hmm. our wholesale 101 training. And in this training, uh, two of my business partners, Travis and Brittany, uh, Brittany who runs our Kansas City operation, Travis who runs our Sh Charlotte, we show you how to find deals with no money down. Now, I gotta admit, when I first got into real estate, the thing that interested me this month, the most was this idea of no money down investing. And so in, in three hours, we show you step by step how to find deals for no money down, how to find buyers for those deals, how to get the deals with, with, with no money out of your pocket, how to get them under contract, uh, how to market for them. We walk you through everything that you need to get going in this very popular class. So if you're broke and you have nothing, uh, we can show you how to get started with as little as 500 bucks. It's a $100 class. You can get that at AaronAdamsTraining.com. Um, Fred, who uh, is one of my business partners and who helps manage this operation, Email Fred at Alpine CS or just reply to the email that we sent you and we can get you more information or get you on the phone with one of our consultants to help you map out uh, what classes are, are good for you because we have several packages put together to get you moving forward on this. And so we're excited about this website. We're excited about the classes. We're continuing to add classes. In October, we're going to add um, a, a asset, a, a, another asset protection class with a nationally known uh, real estate uh, specialist. In November, we're going to add a class on tax reduction strategies. So we're building both for the passive and the active investors these trainings. And so uh, whether you're looking for the education or whether you're looking for deals, um, we have those for you. We've been a deal company forever. Dennis has been a trustee helping investors provide oversight. Dennis, walk them through the cost. If somebody wanted to take some money in an IRA and use it to buy a house, what, what's involved in that process? All we have to do is start a self-directed IRA. And starting a self-directed IRA, I can tell you, is easier than starting a checking account at the bank. I say that only because I had to transfer banks this week or and it was with checking check accounts. It's a pain in the seat now. However, opening an IRA account is really very short. We can do it generally in about eight minutes. Uh, we need to know your name, where you live, your date of birth, that type of thing, and uh, you'll have one form of sign. Once the form, the account is open, which as I say is really nothing of a project, and by the way, that costs $175. And uh, for that 175 or 195 195 thank you very much. See, he's trying to now. give away a deal. What, if I, you I, respond today, you get it for 175 <laughs> Now you're going to hold Dennis to it. <laughs> Just say, Dennis messed up in the email. That's right. 
Uh, and if you call our office and say it, uh, I will say to you, Linda, speak of the English. So no, we will, we will, it is, one, it is 195 no matter what Aaron says. Uh, so once we do that, which is, takes a few minutes, well then co we will contact your current IRA uh, company or your current 401k company and explain to them that we are, and it's a form, it's not an explanation, it's a form that says, we take responsibility for this person's account to this much money, you tell us how much money. Some people want to transfer everything. Some people want to transfer a portion, whatever you're comfortable with, and we'll transfer that. And then as soon as the money arrives, again, depends on where it's coming from. It's either way, anywhere from like three or four days to uh, you know 10 days. As soon as the money arrives, you get an email from us that says, your money is now here. It's available for investing. And you'll just tell us what it is you want to invest in. Maybe you've already found a property that you want to buy. Maybe it's something other than real estate. That's up to you. Maybe you want to use it for lending. Maybe you want to use it for, uh, you know, you make hired money loans. And, 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 you know, we will walk you through the steps of how to do that, which on 99.9% .9 of these things are very, very straightforward. We will take care of all the documentation as far as the IRA is concerned so that you are IRS compliant all the time. And then you, your IRA will own that asset and then get all the benefit of that asset, which is a good thing. That means the IRA will get the rent checks, the IRA will get the appreciation uh, at the time of sale. That's nice because the IRA does not fill out an income tax return. So there's no taxes. So uh, how much does it all cost? It's a 195 to start the account. And then there's a $175 a year fee to have uh, an account with us, that's all. Uh, all investments are $125 per investment except one kind of investment, and that's real estate. Real estate's one sixty-five a year. And the reason for that is we have to touch real estate so much more often. We touch real estate uh, once a month for the rent. We touch it uh, twice a year for property taxes. We touch it once a year for the insurance premium. Uh, if, if anything else happens, we have to touch it again. So it's one sixty-five instead of one twenty-five. So that's it. So if your IRA was one seventy-five a year and it owns a house at one sixty-five a year, that is your cost of having the asset in the IRA. But then imagine the income that comes without income tax back to your IRA. Yeah, uh, definitely take the time to watch the IRA 101 training that we put together. If, if the idea of taking some of your retirement money and owning real estate with it is intriguing to you, uh, go back to the email that we sent you. The link for IRA 101 is in there. Dennis and I spend three hours right here in this, in this, in this office uh, in Indianapolis breaking that down <clears throat> for you. Uh, if you'd like to, to come join us in Indianapolis for our three-day weekend, um, Alpine Capital Solutions dot com is the event is is the page go to live training events email us we're happy to book you a spot have you join us if you don't have at least a hundred thousand dollars to invest passively then you're welcome to join us for free on live stream that we have set up on this same uh, youtube channel you can see the links for friday saturday sunday for the live stream dennis's website is iraclub.org feel free to reach out to them you can see his leadership team on there um, they're happy to assist you, answer your questions, set up a consultation, um, and 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 also our real estate 101 training. So if you're if you're like ah, I don't have passive or I'm not interested in messing with my IRA, I want to learn real estate, I want to learn how to invest. Then each one of these trainings is about three hours long. They're ninety nine dollars. You get the chance to watch a training and decide if you want more. If you want more, well then we have packages for fifteen hundred bucks. We can send you all the documents you need. We can um, help you with Zoom calls where you can hop on and get your questions directly answered from our experts from, that teach the class. If you want a personal mentorship, you want to spend two days with our team learning about wholesaling or flipping or, or Airbnb, then uh, for, for $3,000, you can join us uh, for live in-person training. Uh, uh, we have coaching available, we have mentoring available. And so uh, whatever strategy you're most, most interested in, we have the team, the knowledge where you can literally come to our operation, piggyback off it, see how we're doing deals and take action on it. So hopefully today you have a better idea of who we are as organizations, what our expertise is and how you can take advantage of it. Hopefully you have a, a plan to move forward beyond um, the free trainings that we've provided. 
Uh, watch the trainings. They're, 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 there's no fluff. It's all straight content. If you're serious about investing, this is a fantastic opportunity for you to move forward. Um, the reason that we can charge so little for these classes is because we both have established long-term businesses. We're both uh, uh, millionaires. We both have a lot of money. And so uh, we, we're using these classes and this training as a way to meet and expand our network of investors. And so we're excited that you've taken the time to join us. We look forward to having you at one of our live events um, or, or involved with our Zoom meetings with our classes. And so reach out to, uh, to us for that. Fred at Alpine CS is your direct contact. If for any questions, Fred can send you in the right direction. You can reply to the emails that we've sent. Uh, IRAclub.org is Dennis's website. AlpineCapitalSolutions.com is mine. And Aaron Adams Training is where we have all the education. So thank you again for joining us today, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Good day.